Jordan here, the FitCon, back at you. This week, we're talking about becoming institutionalized. Is it a thing? Well, yes, it is. Uh, and I'm here to tell you about it. You're going to have to distract yourself from the glare from my glasses. I need them to read. And I got a few notes here this week. Um, if you're checking out the shirt, Omer to Mia Clothing, love the brand. Says enough, just reading it. Anyways, let's get into her. Okay. Becoming institutionalized, is it a thing? I'm sure you've seen the Shawshank Redemption, end of the movie, they let out, buddy gets out, ends up hanging himself because he can't hack it in the real world. Is that a real thing? Yeah, it is. Um, realistically, it's a clinical psychology um, term, basically, institutionalized syndrome or institutional syndrome, basically. It's where having spent time, so much time in usually the nut house or prison, where you basically lose, you know, your concept on time, space, your body, your psyche. Everything gets altered, usually in a negative way. And that affects people differently. Some people go right off. You know, that's why you see the recidivism rate. One of the reasons it's so high, which is guys going back to prison, is because they get out. Holy fuck. I've been in five, ten years. I got, you know, when I went in, life was like this. Now it's crazy. Everyone's doing this and that. And I got to work. I got to get a job now. I got to try and find somebody to love me and date me. You know, there's a lot of stress when, you know, the government's been taking care of your ass for the last period of time. Now you're out, generally kicked out with nothing because you're not making money in prison anymore. It's not like it used to be. Where you're getting paid per day. You know, you're basically surviving if you're in there at this point. You're getting out with nothing. you got to start up from nothing. And uh, there's just a lot of stress in that, right? And some people just can't hack it. So why is that? Maybe you're genetically predisposed to being, having emotional, you know, certain things be more susceptible to you. Maybe your life circumstances before prison, how those, you know, maybe you had a good life and you went to prison and been victimized for five, ten years. You might get out the shell of a person you used to be. Right? Or you go in there as a kid, a little young punk full of piss and vinegar, make a name for yourself, you know, maybe pick up some bodies in there or, or you know, fuck somebody up, you know, turn into this, you know, you live into your prison um, persona. And when you get out, you don't know how to hack it in the real world where, you know, the things that are considered um, rules and the politics of jail don't really equate to real life. You know, when I got out, the first time I was only in there for two and a half years, it didn't really phase me too much. Sure it did, because I, you know, to a degree, I was in, ended up in the max and guys were getting lit up and done in every fucking day in there. So you can only live with so much of that, waiting for the doors to crack and someone to come in and shank you for no reason or whatever, right? So, yeah, that's going to take time off your life. That's going to, you know, you're going to be living with cortisol flooring through your system for a long time period of time you know to get past that shit maybe that's ptsd right um you know but then the second sentence you know nine months later three and a half more years you know ending off in minimum security it's not that violent not that crazy in there but you're still you know packed in there like sardines there's overcrowding double bunking you're in a cell that you know like this by this with another guy living right on top of you the toilet where you piss and shit is a foot and a half from your mattress where you're sleeping every night. You got to see buddy pissing and shitting four times a day on top of yourself. See if you're in the max and locked up all day, right? On top of that, they got violence every day, racketeering, you know, putting in some work. If you're younger and you got to, you got to put yourself in a situation where you got to start doing dirty deeds for people because you get yourself in a hole from the drug trade. You know, there's a lack of sexuality. You know, there's forceful homosexuality or, if you're in a woman's jail, I guess, well, same thing. But, you know, deteriorating conditions. Most prisons are just grimy shitholes. You know, they haven't been maintained or looked after. They're not building a lot of new ones. They're just sprucing up the old shitty ones, right? Then you got the bad relationships with staff. Staff rapport with inmates is, you know, some jails is horrible. You know, they're walking around, you know, ready to light you up because someone's going to jump out and assault one of them for the hell of it if, in the max because up there, you know, in the max, no one really cares about what's going on. Uh, medium, minimum security, a little bit different because you're there on your own best behavior. So 
the staff there isn't too concerned about getting lit up when they do their punch, right? Um, and then you're psychologically isolated from the world. From the day you go in, life is going to keep going for everybody else. It's going to stop for you. You might have went in when there was an iPhone 2. Now you're getting out, there's an iPhone 11. There's fucking 5G, DoorDash. You know, a lot of shit blew my mind. You know, I seen a lot of shit when I was inside still because I had access at one point to some technology. But still, it's not the same as being out there in the mix. And then you're in crowds of people. You know, I got kicked out. And being in groups of people was just awkward, right? And I'm working downtown, big city of Vancouver, bougie place. And I'm living in a halfway house. Hard to relate to a lot of these people that, you know, you live a certain life and you're surrounded by these downtown people and hustle and bustle, big crowds. I remember going to a UFC fight with my girlfriend and her brother at the time and having a fucking meltdown because I was in a group of thousands of people waiting for somebody to come sweep by and people got no idea of personal space. And prison, if you roll up on somebody and touch them, that's a sign that you're probably about to get stabbed or something, right? And if you're in public nowadays, in a big public gathering and people walk by and they're rubbing elbows, they don't think anything of it, right? Or they're whistling and you hear that and that's a big no-no in prison. You know, every time I hear somebody whistling now, I'm just like, Ooh. but at the same point, regular people don't know about this shit, so you can't hold it against them. But yeah, you do become a little bit altered in time as you go in and not everybody can handle it the same as everybody else. Um, you know, for some people, they can do six months and be victimized the whole time because they're weak or whatever and have a horrible go and it'll ruin their life. And it is traumatizing and it can be to anybody, you know. And there's guys that can do 10 years and hold it down and get out and just fucking flip the switch and you go back to reality. You know, I got out. I only did six and a half out of my nine and a half. I got three years on parole, so I'm not fucking done yet. But do I want to go back? Hell no. I'd rather be dead than go back. But at the same point, when I was in there, I didn't look at it like my freedom and everything had been taken away. I chose to live a lifestyle. I didn't seek out, uh, you know, any kind of easy way out. You know, I, I, I wasn't born into the lifestyle. I chose to fucking sell drugs and get into that scene. And I fucking enjoyed it. And when I got busted, it was well needed because I was not on a good path. And I probably wouldn't still be alive here today making this video if I was still doing my thing out there. So for me, I looked at it like an opportunity to change, grow and make, have an experience. And I sat in there for six and a half years and I went to school almost every day in my cell because they won't give you schooling if you want to do anything above high school in Canada. That's how lame it is here. So I went, took it upon myself to get my own education through the mail, through a school, the ISSA, who would certify uh, personal trainers through mail correspondence because we didn't have internet access. And I did that the whole time. I wrote to people all the time. I journaled. I drew. I, uh, if I could have played an instrument, I would have played, but I worked out like a motherfucker too. Hours a day, every single day, I took no time off. And I became so strong and proficient in calisthenics that when I got out, my body was like a sponge when I was able to get into the gym and hit some real free weights again. You know, I wrote a book basically outlining my FitCon system of training when I was in there, which is calisthenics based with, you know, additional ex auxiliary weight included exercises because we used to have water bags or use another body, not a dead body, your cellmate's body for body weight. If you were left with a dead body in your cell, you'd probably use it if you needed to, but you know, that's not going to make it. They do a punch a few times a day. Bodies don't sit around. So yeah, you're using books, you're using water bags, anything you can get for weight when you have none. So you got to be pretty grateful, creative, uh, resourceful. And that's, you know, what's going to make a good inmate. And when you can get out and not have the emotional trauma destroy you from being, you know, subjugated and sitting in a prison cell in shitty conditions for X amount of years where the focus is not on rehabilitation, it's on punishment and treating you like fucking shit until you get out. That's just the way it is. Um, if you can kind of hack that, 
you can get out and have a good second chance at life. You know, some guys, you know, they can't. They can fall back on what's familiar to them, and that's going back to the game, the lifestyle, the crime that got them in there. So they can go back and get those, you know, square meals and a bed to sleep on and, you know, be told what and what to do and when to do and when to do it. For me, you know, I hated it. But at the same point, I looked at it like they're not taking my freedom. I'm free in my brain. I'm free in my heart. And you could have me in the fucking max for the rest of my life and I'd still be a free man. But once you admit that you're not free, and you know, getting that victim mentality, you know, unless say you are a guy that's maybe got picked up on a, a bad murder beef or something that you didn't do and you're serving time for charges you didn't do. And I know guys in there too, my own Selly and a couple other guys that did big beefs for other people and they didn't do them. So for those guys, the psychology is different you're serving a sentence for something you didn't do. That would be a hard thing to swallow for me. I put myself in there. So I'm like, yeah, okay. Having my family to talk to good friends, you know, a woman to date while you're in that situation, if you're lucky enough to hold on to or find somebody to write to or date, you know, not a lot of people are wanting to put up with a guy in that situation. So the people that are, you know, that'll show you who your circle is and who your good people are. And, uh, well, trust me, when you go to the prison, big, you know, balling drug dealer guy, huge circle. And guess what? You go to prison for a few months, the circle just goes, whoosh. everybody comes in there. They'll scavenge through all your shit. You got nothing left. By the time you get out, all you got left is what you, you know, learned in here and what you can take with you to the street because everything else is going to be gone. And so you can't care about that shit. You got to move on. And that's just the way it is. Those people that you still have in your life. You know, those are the solid people. And I had a good family and a good base of friends that helped support me while I was in there. And that made a huge difference on me not losing it in periods of time where, you know, you're having like doubts or you're not feeling it or the stress of your situation is getting to you. So not a lot of people have those relationships, those family members, those friends who haven't written them off. Maybe you've been in jail 20 years. Eventually the visits go, people die. Who remembers you, right? You're on your own. So, you know, institutionalization is a thing. You know, you know, most guys, unless you're picking up double, triple lives, are going to be getting out at one point in their life. So how crazy do you want them to be when they get out? There should be more of a focus on, you know, mental health in there and getting guys ready for real world, not just kicking them loose with a fucking a bag full of shitty clothes and, you know, $5 in their account. That ain't going to get you very far, you know, uh, you know, for the guys that do get out and get their shit together, you know, give them credit. It's not an easy thing. You know, we, the odds are against us, right? There's, you know, five, 10% of guys get out and stay out and that's just the world we live in. So while you're in there, hold it together. Don't become institutionalized. If you're in there long-term, you know, get in that psyche that you're not going to let them break you. And, uh, do what you can do you know prison ain't a pleasant thing ideally you don't want to go so you know don't make those choices uh but hey some of us just got to go so go in do your time for the crime and move on with your life get your shit together you know and uh you know those people that were still there for you your family you know use that for motivation to make the right choices when you get out are we perfect? No. Am I perfect? Hell no. Am I growing? Yes. Am I reformed? No, but I'm reforming, growing, and I thank everybody that supports my channel and my FitCon business, uh, personal training, strength coach training. You know, thanks everybody, and uh, next video will be out on Friday.